Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Friday, uh, June the 25th. We got the Eastern Conference Finals Game 2 on Friday night, the Bucks and the Hawks facing off once again. As always, guys, we're going to talk through uh, today's showdown slate, um, You know, kind of talk through the player pool from top to bottom, really hit on the guys that have the most interest in. Um, you know, anyone that played minutes on on the la or in the last game, we will talk about really just hit on all the guys that I think are going to be in the rotation, going to get minutes because on these showdown slates, even if a guy is only going to play maybe eight or 10 minutes, you know, they're viable on showdown because random things can happen. They can put up, you know, 15, 16 DraftKings points in those eight minutes, somehow make the winning lineup. So uh, we'll kind of talk through all the guys I expect to see minutes, talk through the entire player pool. Uh, but before we get, uh, do get started with the breakdown, as always, I would appreciate it. If you would click that like button down below, be sure to click that subscribe button as well and also hit the notification bell so that way you do get notified every time I upload and you also do get notified every time I live stream. Um, I should be live once again um, Friday afternoon, probably around 5.30 Eastern time. Um, I'll be live breaking down today's slate, um, you know, talking through everything with you guys. If you have any questions on tonight's slate, as always, I can answer those in the live stream. So uh, be sure to tune into the live stream Friday afternoon. Um, and one more thing, guys. If you have not checked out Prize Picks yet, uh, Prize Picks they are sponsoring my channel, and we have partnered with Prize Picks. Um, if you guys want to check out Prize Picks, you want to see what they do have to offer, be sure to use promo code NOAH uh, when you sign up. That will give you a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. If you decide to deposit $100, uh, Prize Picks they will match that. They'll give you an additional $100 to play with, and, and Prize Picks is pretty much a new way to play DFS. You're not playing, you know, you're not making a lineup. You're not playing against other players. It's pretty much you versus the projection. Uh, they have their, you know, fantasy projection for each player, and you can pretty much predict whether you think they, you know, the player goes over or under that projection. As, as the video goes on, we'll definitely talk about some of the picks I do like on prize picks for today. Um, don't have a ton right now. There's only 14 players listed uh, with the projection, but, you know, as the day goes on, on on Friday, they will have their single stat available, which is where you can, you know, take a look at the points projection, rebound, assist. Um, you can, you know, take the over or the under on those as well, but We'll talk about some of these uh, fantasy projections, um, some of the guys I like the overs, and maybe some unders as well for tonight's game. But let's go ahead and take a look at this showdown slate today, and we'll start off at the top. Uh, pretty much we'll talk about Giannis and Trey first, just because I think those are clearly the top two studs on the slate. Obviously, um, you know you had to have both these guys last slate to win. Giannis put up 70 DK points in 41 minutes. Really to no surprise, he, he had a ton of success in this matchup. I don't think anything's going to change. Like The Hawks just... They don't really have any elite defenders that can slow down Giannis. You know, he was very popular last slate. I think he was like 80 or 90% owned. I mean, you're gonna, you're probably gonna have to have him. Even if Giannis puts up maybe like a floor game and has like 55 DK points, there's a pretty good chance he's still gonna be in the optimal lineup. So, you know, the floor alone that Giannis has, the massive upside he has, he's clearly one of the best plays today. And if you can fit him in, clearly you want to be playing Giannis. Um, whether you play him at the captain or in the util, you're going to want to get him into as many lineups as you can. I, I think, you know, definitely if I'm paying up a captain, Giannis is the guy I do prefer. Now, Trey Young actually did outscore Giannis last slate. Trey Young had a massive game, went for 75 DK points in 41 minutes, had 48 points, 7 rebounds, 11 assists. Look, Trey Young's been awesome, man. He's He's been good so far in the series. He was really good in game one. He was pretty good in the Sixers series as well. But, you know, when it when I'm choosing between Trey Young or Giannis, I still prefer Giannis. I just think Giannis has a higher floor. I think his ceiling is higher. I know Trey Young can put up 70 DK points at times, but you know the game he had last game I think was a legit like total ceiling game. Like I don't know if there's I don't know if we're gonna see Trey Young put up more than 75 DK points the rest of the season, and maybe I'll be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure 75 DK points is close to like the best game he's had this season. Like I don't think he's ever put up 80 so far, and I may be wrong there, but when it comes to Trey Young or Giannis, I prefer Giannis. But again, like you had to have both these guys last slate. There's a good chance that you get another big game from both Trey Young and Giannis. I mean, they're clearly the two best studs on the slate. I think if you can get Trey Young in with Giannis, he is definitely the number two top option for me. Um, and then you have Middleton and Drew now. Middleton and Drew have kind of been, or at least talking about these two, like Middleton's been way better. It just, you know, it's you look at the game log, especially in the Brooklyn series, late in that Brooklyn series, like games three through seven. I mean, he was just consistently putting up good games. He was really good in game six, really good in game seven, 70 DK points, 55 DK points. Well, last game in, in game one of this series, Middleton kind of had a bad game. 30 DK points, played 41 minutes, but you look here, he shot the ball terribly. 26% uh, from the field, he was 0 for 9 from three. 
I said last night that I preferred Drew over Middleton just given the ownership you know, disc- discrepancy just because I knew Drew was going to be so much lower owned. I think today I want to flip-flop that. Uh, you know, Since Middleton had a bad game last game, I think his ownership might come down a little bit and we might see Drew get more ownership. Drew had a really good game last game, went for 61 DK points. One of the best games we've seen from him in a long time. Played 42 minutes, was really aggressive, which you do like to see. He took 25 shots actually kind of shot the ball well for once. He He's really been struggling with his shots so far in the playoffs, but he shot the ball well last game, had a massive game. Look, I'm a big Drew Holiday fan. I think he's a really underrated player. He's a guy that does have a lot of upside for fantasy. Between him or between him or Middleton, like I think both these guys just on a nightly basis, they project so similarly. I think they're going to play close to 40 minutes. You know, I think both Middleton and Drew do play around 40 to 42 minutes. You know, some nights Middleton's going to put up the big game. Some nights Drew is going to put up the big game. When I choose between these two guys, I usually just prefer whichever one's lower owned. I think with Middleton busting last game, that might make him lower owned today. So if I have to choose between one of Middleton or Drew, I, I do lean Middleton, um, just given I think he might be a little bit lower owned. Then you have John Collins and Clint Capella. Uh, John Collins, man, he's, he's been really good these last few games. He continues to produce. I've kind of been off of John Collins. He's not really been someone I've rostered much so far in the playoffs. On a single game showdown slate where we don't really have any, you know, a ton of options. Obviously, John Collins is in play, but this is someone that, like, I just don't ever feel like I need to play John Collins. Like, rarely does John Collins go out there and just break a slate. You know, he did have a really good game last game. I'm pretty sure he was in the winning lineup last game or last slate, but at 8,600, you know, his price tag just keeps coming up. I'm not saying that John Collins is going to go out there and just completely shit the bed, but I feel like 40, 45 DK points, like, these are kind of. I don't want to say outlier performances, but it's just it's it's not regular for Collins to put up 40, 45 DK points. Most nights you're going to get like 30, 35 from him. He does play around 36, 38 minutes. You know the minutes are going to be there. The production though is just it's inconsistent. Like I just don't think I need to pay 8,600 for John Collins. He's probably more of a secondary play for me or like a last guy in. Um, not someone I really expect to have much exposure to at all. Then you have Clint Capella, who I talked a lot about last slate, and you know he finally had a really good game. It's pretty much his first like big game in the playoffs he had uh 12 and 19 with two assists a block and a steal 44 dk points one of the best games so you know for fantasy that we've seen so far from capella in the postseason he played 38 minutes he was kind of the the pretty much he was defending Giannis. like they pretty much went with capella versus Giannis. Giannis was playing a lot of center uh last game i think they probably do that again here and if we're getting 36 38 minutes from capella if he's not gonna have to guard or if he's not gonna have to you know be matched up with joel and like it's just It's a better matchup for Capella. I think he's going to have a lot more success in this series than he did in the Philly series than he did against the Knicks. So I definitely like Clint Capella at 7,800. I do prefer him over John Collins between those two. I think Collins will be higher own, and and that just makes me prefer Capella. I I think both those guys project very similarly. Uh, I think they both play similar minutes. You know, Middleton and Drew, I think, are, you know, neck and neck, and I think Collins and Capella are neck and neck for me. So between those two, those two groupings, I prefer the lower own, and I think Middleton's going to be lower own than Drew. I lean Middleton there. I think Capella will be lower on the Collins, so I lean Capella there. But obviously, all four guys are playable. Um, you obviously know that. Um, but then you have Herter and Bogdan. So Herter was really good in Game 6 and Game 7 of the Philly series. Then he came back down to earth last game. He still did play big minutes. He played 36 minutes, but a pretty bad game from Herter. Only 17 DK points. You know, Didn't shoot the ball that well, just 5 for 12 from the field. You know, 7,200. He feels priced about right. Like, I don't think we should expect 40-plus DK points a night from Kevin Herter. Like, he just doesn't have that kind of upside. I think he was definitely performing a bit over his head, you know, those last few games against the Sixers, but still playable, just not someone I really have that much interest in. I'd rather get to Capella, who I think just is a better point-per-minute player and has more upside overall. Bogdan, I mean, man, he, he's just tough to roster right now. Like, he just doesn't look fully healthy. Again, he had another bad game last game. I mean, that's like four straight games with less than 20 fantasy points for Bogdan. Like, he's just been so bad lately. I think he's going to turn it on at some point. Like, I think he's going to have a good game at some point, but he's tough to roster right now. You know, if you want to take that risk and play Bogdan and hope that he finally has a good game, you can, but I don't think I'm going to go there until I see him actually produce, until I actually see him have a good game. Uh, Once again, he is questionable for today, so do keep an eye on that. I assume he plays, uh, given he was questionable last game and he played last game, Um, but that'll be something to monitor. But then we have Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez um, took a big hit in this in in the first game in this series. He only played 20 minutes. He didn't play much at all in the second half. Um, they they just played Giannis at center a lot. We saw Bobby Portis get some good run off the bench. Bobby Portis played really well. 
you know, Brooke Lopez was consistently getting, you know, around 30, 35 minutes in the Brooklyn series. He played massive minutes in Game 7 of the Brooklyn series. This is a different matchup, though, and I think, you know, maybe we might not see Brooke Lopez play as many minutes here. He's definitely a lot more risky now. Um, you know, the fact that he only played 20 minutes is a pretty much, it's a big red flag for me. Like, I don't think it's a guarantee that he plays, like, 20 minutes again. I mean, Brooke Lopez could play 30 minutes tonight, and I would not be surprised. But given how they played out that game last game, they played, you know, Giannis a lot at center, Bobby Portis played really well. The minutes are not secure for Brooke Lopez right now. Like, I don't know if he's going to be someone that plays big minutes in the series. I'm a little bit worried about him. I don't have that much interest in him at 6,200. Gallo, you know, 5,600 is fine. He's going to play 25 to 30 minutes. He's been super inconsistent this season, but, you know, Gallo still has some upside. He can knock down threes. He can get rebounds. Just... Not someone I feel great about, honestly. Um, I would like him a little bit more, though, if Bogdan does get ruled out. But like I said, I think Bogdan plays. Uh, Cam Reddish was active last game, but he didn't even play. So, you know, we can't really go to Cam Reddish unless we unless we actually know he's going to you know, step on the floor, which we don't right now. Pat Connaughton uh, was a pretty popular value play last night, and he busted as well. Uh, played 29 minutes, which is good to see, but he only had 10 drafting points. Um, shot the ball terribly, one for six from the field. I mean... He's not a guy that's going to be really productive when he's out there anyway. Like, playing alongside Giannis, Drew, Middleton, like, Connaughton's just not going to get much usage. But the minutes have been consistent so far in the playoffs for Pat Connaughton. He's been consistently getting, you know, at least around 20 to 22 minutes. He played 29 last game. He did close that game. Um, that You know, they went with him instead of Brooke Lopez. They played Giannis at center. So, if we're getting 20-plus minutes from Pat Connaughton, I mean, at 4,200, he is definitely in play. But, you know, he was a lot cheaper last slate. I think last slate he was 2,200. Now that his prices come up, I'm not as high on him, but I think it's still viable. Now, P.J. Tucker, I didn't really like that much last slate. He, you know, he wasn't great either, but he did play way more minutes than I thought he would. He played 35 minutes. I thought maybe his minutes would take a little bit of a hit just because I didn't think they really needed him as much in this series um, just because, you know, he doesn't really have that Kevin Durant that he needs to guard, but he still did play 35 minutes. I think we're probably going to get at least 30 minutes from P.J. Tucker, probably plays a few more, like, Maybe they put Trey Young on him. I don't think they're, they would do that. I think Tucker did guard Trey Young a little bit in that game. Um, I don't think it really went really well though. But 3,600, the minutes should be there. He's cheap. You know, you know, you guys know what PJ Tucker is. I mean, he's not a productive player. For him to really have a good game, you're going to need him to get like three blocks, three steals, or he's going to have to hit like two or three corner threes which he can do, but obviously I'm not that confident in P.J. Tucker either. But Bobby Portis, I think, is definitely my favorite value on this slate. He was a guy that I talked a lot about last slate. I was pretty confident that he would get back in the rotation, and he did. Um, he played 15 minutes last game. He was super productive in that time, had 22 DK points. We, we know Bobby Portis can be productive when he gets when he gets minutes. You, know, you saw it during the regular season. In the little bit of time he's played so far in the playoffs, he's been productive. Given how well he played last game, you would have to assume that Bobby Portis is going to get, you know, 12 to 15 minutes again. At 3K, we don't really have a ton of great value. I, I like Bobby Portis a lot. Once again, I think he's probably the best punt value play on the slate. On prize picks, his projection over there right now is 13 fancy points. I think Bobby Portis can easily go over uh, 13 fancy points on prize picks if he does play around 15 minutes again. Um, and then, you know, if, if by some chance Bobby Portis gets a DMP, which I think is very unlikely... That, you know, that wouldn't even impact you on prize picks because if a guy gets a DMP and you bet they're over, they just cancel the entry. So really, there's no risk with Portis here, I think. I think if he does play again, he's going to get his probably 10 to 15 minutes. And Portis is a fantasy point per minute player, can easily eclipse uh, 13 fantasy points. So I like over 13 fantasy points for Bobby Portis on prize picks. That's definitely one of the kind of picks I'm looking at early. There's a couple more that you can maybe go to, like, I took the over on Pat Connaughton last slate, and he came up just short, which is super annoying. He's got a pretty low projection again, though. He's projected to only 13 fantasy points. If we get, like, 25 minutes from Pat Connaughton, I mean, he can definitely go over 13 fantasy points. If you want to take the over there, I don't mind that either. Uh, Kevin Herter, his projection lately has been, like, 27, 28. It's been pretty high. He had a bad game last game, and now his projection has come down to 23. So I definitely like Kevin Herter at over 23 and a half fantasy points, you know. It was tough to bet the over on Herter when his projection was like 28, but now that it's come down to 23, I do like the over there. I think the minutes will still be there for Kevin Herter. You know, he shot the ball pretty bad last game. If he knocks down just a few more shots, he's going to eclipse this 23 and a half point projection on, on prize pick. So uh, definitely like over Kevin Herter, 23 and a half. Now on, on you know, the showdown slate, 
where Kevin Herter is priced is 7,200. I don't think he really stands out that much, but definitely like over 23 and a half fantasy points for him on, on prize picks. So these are kind of two early picks that I like. You know, the rest of these guys, a lot of their projections feel pretty accurate. Um, I took the over on Capella last slate. His projection, I believe, was 29. It's 36 today, so I don't think I'm going to touch that one um, just because they did bump up his projection a good amount. You know, I think taking the over on Trey Young and Giannis r- right now just makes a ton of sense. I mean, both these guys are playing 40 minutes. We're seeing Giannis and Trey just dominate the usage, do everything for their team. Last game, obviously, you know, Giannis had 70. Trey Young had 69. I mean, yeah, there's a very good chance if this game's close and you get 40 minutes from Trey, 40 minutes from Giannis, they probably go over their projection on prize picks. So if you want to take the over on both those guys, totally fine with that as well. But definitely my two favorite kind of early pick picks right now on prize picks are over Bobby Porter's 13 fancy points, over Kevin Herter 23 and a half fancy points. And if you guys do want to tell me on these picks, if you want to do a little you know two pick flex play or a two pick power play that would potentially pay out three x. Uh, you can sign up for Prize Picks link down below in the description. Use promo code NOAH when you do sign up, and that will give you a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. If you do deposit $100, Prize Picks will match that um, and give you an additional $100 to play with. So you know you can tell me on these picks if you would like. But I think we pretty much covered everything for the showdown slate. You know, Bryn Forbes, like I bet his over on Prize Picks last slate, he had a six fantasy, pro- or his projection was six fantasy points, and luckily he was able to get over that. Um, he had five points and two rebounds, so he finished with like 7.4 fantasy points. But he only played 12 minutes last game. I don't think Bryn Forbes is going to get a ton of minutes. It just doesn't seem like they really want to play him big minutes right now. So he's tough to roster even at 2,400. Lou Will, I think, only played like 10 minutes. Yeah, he played 12 minutes last slate or last game. Probably plays anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. You know, for 2,200, I guess he's fine, but don't feel great about him. Solomon Hill actually played way more than I thought he would. He played 20 minutes last game. I have no idea if that happens again. You know, if you want to take a shot on Solomon Hill, he's the stone minimum 1K. You can maybe do that. But for me, I think if I'm looking for a punt value play, Bobby Portis is the guy that I definitely like the most. He's the guy that I think has the most upside down here. He's the best permanent player out of all these guys. Um, And then like probably Pat Connaughton would be my second favorite just because the minutes have been secure for Pat Connaughton, which is, you know, I guess PJ Tucker has been getting consistent minutes as well. But uh, P.J. Tucker is just such a bad permanent player. He's not someone I really ever want to roster. But if we're talking about value plays, the value is tough today. I think Connaughton, Tucker, Portis, those are the guys I'm probably looking to for value. I think Portis is my favorite, followed by Connaughton, then Tucker. Uh, But all three are definitely viable. And if you're trying to pay up for for Trey and Giannis, which you probably do want to try and do, uh, you're going to have to look to these guys uh, that we just mentioned. So, yeah, I think that does it. Uh, for pretty much the entire player pool, guys, I think I talked about really everyone that I have interest in, so I think we broke everything down. Appreciate you guys watching the video. As always, I hope you did enjoy. If you did, uh, be sure to click that like button, click that subscribe button as well, and also hit the notification bell, so that way you do get notified every time I upload, and you also do get notified every time I live stream. Um, once again, guys, I will be live this afternoon, uh, Friday afternoon, probably around 5.30 Eastern time. If you guys do want to come and hang out, uh, I'll be live breaking down the slate and, and answering all your guys' questions as always. Uh, and lastly, be sure to check out Price Picks if you have not yet. If you look at the bottom of the screen or you know just go to the description of this video, use that promo code NOAH. When you do sign up, that will give you a 100% match on your first deposit uh, up to $100. So if you do want to try out Price Picks, you want to see what they have to offer, you want to get in some action on tonight's game, uh, just make sure you use that promo code so you do get your deposit bonus. Um, and yeah, guys, I think that does it for, for today's slate. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, Good luck on the slate. Enjoy your Friday night, and we will see you in the next one. Good luck tonight, guys. Peace.